Hi guys. <laughs> First of all, I'm not mad at you. I'm not mad at you guys. I'm mad at myself. <laughs> so here I am again, late at night, recording when I should not be recording. It is, let me check the time. Oh, awesome, 8 p.m. <laughs> For reference, I started recording today. I recorded this morning. Recorded about uh, 11 30 12 and I stopped recording at around 2 30 so and that was one episode so anyways yes welcome back to my channel my name is Aaron and today we're going to be playing Disco Elysium you guessed it Whoa. <laughs> okay so uh, this is number two in terms of how many times I've recorded late at night during this series and that just goes to show I am very invested. I'm very, very invested. I just, I, I have to keep playing. Okay, we did a lot last episode, and we got to a point where I'm, I just, ooh, I have to keep playing. It's so hard to stay away from this game and wait until I can record for the next episode, and I, I just need to record tonight because I work all day tomorrow, and I'm not gonna have time, and I'm gonna be thinking about it all day. So you know what? Here I am. No regrets. <laughs> no regrets in this studio. I'm already hot and sweaty. <laughs> it's, it's, I have, my face is breaking out so bad. I don't know if you can tell that I've just lathered my face in foundation. <laughs> don't ask questions about it. Anyway, yeah. So uh, tonight's drink of choice is chocolate milk. <laughs> Either way, I just, okay, let's get into the recap so I can start playing. So in the last episode, we went back to the Derm- <laughs> Okay. So in the last episode, we went back to the Doom commercial area again. This time because I wanted to retry a white check that I failed the first time around, and that was to shout up into the chimney down in the- in the- in the basement where the ice bear fridge was. I tried it the first time and I failed, but this time I won. And I was able to retry and I managed to shout up there and a woman responded and invited us back up to her place. I'm making that sound a lot more inappropriate than it actually was. She was a very sweet lady, I forgot her name, I think it was like Nia. She was a dice maker, she makes dice for role players, which is a really cool profession. I didn't know that was really a thing. I'm sure there's people out there who actually do that for a living and that's pretty cool. Basically, we just talked to her for a long time. She told us about all the different businesses that came and went in the commercial district and how they went out of business and, you know, what they did there in their short period of time. Plaisance was convinced that there was a curse going around in the plaza, but honestly, to me, it just seems like bad business plans. I mean, there's probably more to it than that. I want to go back to that girl and talk to her again sometime soon if I can, but I spent a lot of time doing it in the last episode, so I want to mix it up this time around. After that, we went back up to where the union workers were, or no, the people on strike were near the harbor. We went up to Measurehead again and we tried to face them in a battle of fisticuffs. <laughs> we did not do very well, expectedly. It was very clear to me that we were not going to win that fight. Um, he basically just kind of crushed our hand and told us to repeat some things, but I refused. After that, we went back and visited Kuno again. This time around, we were finally able to figure out what was going on with him and Kuno S. I failed this check the other time. I managed to pick both options that were wrong, but this time around, I got the right one and he managed to open up to us about her. He told us that she was in his apartment building one night and just dripping wet and crazy, <laughs> according to him. She does a lot of different hard drugs and stuff that even Kuno doesn't even mess with, he said. He also claimed that she had killed someone before, specifically had killed police officers. He wasn't very specific about it and he wouldn't really open up more than that because it's obvious he does really care about her and sees her as a sister, in my opinion. It sort of seems like they're each other's only friends, really. Um, Kuno's dad is definitely not a good dude, and you can definitely tell where Kuno gets his personality traits from. I mean, I'm saying that and I haven't even met his dad, but from how he describes him, that's just how it seems to me. And lastly, we managed to get into the harbor, which is something I'm so excited about. We did it by climbing up Kuno's secret hideout and jumping off the roof into the harbor. And I'm so excited. In this way, we didn't have to face Measurehead, and we didn't have to open the 
the harbor doors either to let the scabs in and that would have caused a huge ruckus i'm sure this way we can sneak in there and speak to everett claire ourselves i want to know what he has to say i want him to help us out and get that body down from the tree so we can finally inspect it further hopefully we're able to do that this episode if not i'm just gonna wander around if i can maybe read a few books if i find them if I can buy them, that is. Let's not waste more time because I'm kind of on a time crunch this episode so that I don't record all night. So let's not waste more time and let's get back into this game and see what happens next. Okay, yay, we're back. Let me just look and see if um, my thoughts are done. They've just been cooking in here for a while now. We have 34 minutes to go. So uh, that's cool. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared to be this guy. A stair made of pellets leading up. I know we saw him. Oh, whoa. Wait, what? Oh. Hi. He's a large man. How are you? <laughs> oh, God. The fool is a walrus of a man seated behind a large desk. He looks up from his work, not the least bit surprised to see you. He's terrifying. Wait, his one eye is looking the other way. I'm scared. I don't like it. With great effort, he straightens himself up in his chair, yet says nothing. He simply stares at you. A typical power play. Wait for him to speak first. Show him you've got a backbone. Say nothing. Look him dead in the eye. Are you in charge of the dock workers? Let's go straight to business. There's a dead body in a tree. Leave without comment. Say nothing. The one good eye of this man fills you up without even flickering. The other, his lazy eye, is constantly moving like a goldfish in a tank. I don't like it. Is Kim going to be the first one to speak? Grotesquely magnified by his plus six glasses. For a moment, you don't know where to look. It is unbearably humid in the trailer. Beads of sweat slide down the man's forehead. Keep staring. At first, nothing happens. His face wears a wide and self-satisfied <laughs> smile. Every now and then, he smacks his big lips. Sam. <laughs> he begins to speak, albeit very slowly, purposely leaving a pause after his opener. Ha! I won. <laughs> Mr. Dubois, Mr. Kitsuragi, how nice that you found a moment to pay a visit to the Debardeurs Union. I'm Everard Clare, head of this little operation here. Dubois? He knows my last name? Wait, what? Okay. Please, have a seat. Well, he knows Kim's name, so he knows mine. Okay, he gestures to a tiny folding chair opposite his giant desk. What a sleazy dude. The folding chair looks like a torture device. Extremely uncomfortable. You go ahead, detective. The lieutenant nods at you, then the chair. Whatever he has in store for you, it can't be good, he thinks. I'll do my best. I got your back, Kim. Forget about that. What's with this Dubois stuff? You're getting some seriously bad oh. vibes from Is that just a nickname? Why are you calling me Mr. Dubois? Please, Mr. Dubois, let us converse in a civilized manner, as equals. Take a seat. I insist. It's nothing. Yes, that's probably right. It's nothing. Forget about it. Filter it out. I don't sit. It's kind of my thing. <laughs> Take a seat. Excellent, Mr. Dubois. I can see that you're a reasonable man, and reasonable men... Reasonable men can be of great use to one another. He gives you a sly wink. Try to wink back. Damn, this chair is uncomfortable. Remain serious. So tell me, how can the head of the Debardeurs Union help a representative of the Revishal Citizens Militia today? Wait, what? The chair you're sitting on has got to be the most uncomfortable what? chair in the world. Oh, shit. It's violating your backside. Oh, by the way, I heard you Jeez. got a rather rude reception from a certain Lawrence Gart. Some people have no manners. It pains me to say. I only have one say. healing item left. Shit. 
Lawrence Guard. Some people have no manners. So he, well, he's definitely been expecting me. That's obvious. But this should take care of that nonsense. He points to a giant novelty check on his desk. It's absolutely comically huge. It should be sufficient to cover your expenses for a few days and patch over your differences with a cafeteria manager. Go ahead, take it. He points at it again. Wow, that's 25 real. That's good money. <laughs> you need it. Why do I feel like it's fake? Wait, you know Gart? Thank you, Everard. Take the comically large check. Take the comically large check, but don't say anything. Keep it. I'm good. Leave the check. You can take that comically large check and shove it up your ass. Uh, take it, but don't say anything. Is there anything you'd like to say to me? Or... No. Yeah, thanks. No, it's cool. You've got integrity. <laughs> cool? I wouldn't go that far. I'm sure there are cooler things than delivering a comically oversized novelty check to a cafeteria manager. But, sure, if that's what's cool nowadays. <laughs> I feel like it's fake. I'm gonna give it to Guard and he's gonna be like, what the hell is this? Now, I'd like to set your mind at ease about one other matter. Your lost gun. Let me assure you, union people are on it as we speak. I've got my best hounds looking for that lost gun. Uh-huh. His slug-like lips move, but all you hear is an echo. Lost gun. Lost gun. Lost gun. Rubbing it in my face. The world Shit. is swallowed by a black hole of fear. Only two words escape its gravitational pull. Lost and gun. Okay. How do you know about my lost gun? I know everything, Harry. Right now, I know that you're worried. Don't be worried. Everything's going to be all right. Now, Kim knows my name. It's not like you left it loaded. You didn't lose a loaded gun. Local children aren't out there playing with it right now, pointing it into their own mouths. It's in a safe place. I just know it. I have a feeling everything's going to be all right. It was loaded. Spucker. There were two bullets in it. You always keep at least two barrels loaded. Kim? Um, Kim? <laughs> Turn to Kim. <laughs> Don't panic. <laughs> God, you're sweating. Your knee is jerking. You're about to cry, aren't you? You're about to cry because you lost your gun and those children are gonna shoot themselves with it. Oh no, I should've just told Kim. No, I'm not about to cry. Try to stay cool. Mr. Dubois, you don't look so good. What is this Shit. Mr. Dubois he keeps repeating? What is he trying to pull here? You need to cool the fuck down. Chill. Can I stand up? Mr. Dubois! Mr. Dubois! Harry! Oh my god. The large man snaps his fingers, but to no effect, you're in some s stupor. Keep sliding down the chair like a jello shot. There are no Harrys. Let your mind go to your safe place. Mr. Dubois, are you okay? Can I get you a glass of water or something? Are you having some kind of medical emergency? I hate this guy. Maybe you could use your hands somehow. In a kind of throw-in motion. Like you're throwing that Mr. Dubois act right back at him. He's Mr. Dubois. Nah, I'm as good as it gets, Mr. Dubois. Vaguely gesture your hands above your head. Oh yeah, man, I'm fucking great. <laughs> Keep sliding. <laughs> Actually, this chair is uncomfortable. I could use that glass of water. Sit upright. What an odd demonstration of... Huh. You got me, Harry. I don't even know what. As entertaining as it was, I'm afraid we're wasting our time. And I'm an extremely busy man, as I'm sure you are too. Okay, enough. We are here to ask you some questions pertaining to a murder investigation. Thank you, Kim. Quick, here's your window. Get yourself together and ask him questions. Police officer questions. You got it. It is about time to stop embarrassing yourself. Questions will help you regain some of your lost dignity. Good point. I'm a mess. I'm told the union is involved in the local drug trade. Oh, that's what 
Joyce wants to look at. Are you going to ask me how I got in? You call me Mr. Dubois. Why? Could you help me get a dead body down from a tree? Let's talk about my last gun. I want to talk about the hanging. I want to talk about the hanging. Oh, of course. That's your main thing here. That's why you're in Martinez. I know everything that goes on around here, and I would love to discuss it with you. I mean, it's no secret that the lynching is connected to the strike. So much to talk about. Honestly, it's been weighing on me so heavily. I understand you need to interview me. I sense there's a but. But there's a thing that's been keeping me up at night. I want to talk about the hanging. I mean, if we could just calmly talk, exchange information, we could blow this thing wide open. Yes, that sounds good. Let's do that. The lieutenant says with a slow nod. But I can't think straight with this thing weighing on me. You're police officers, aren't you? I have a crazy idea. You guys are basically door-opening machines. Incredibly talented at opening doors. You've heard wrong, Everett. We're not. Oh, you're being too modest, my friend. But don't worry. This annoying thing I have is completely legal. I just need you to open a door. The harbor door? Does this jiggling ooze think he's going to use you? He's got another thing coming. Play his game, son, with your eyes peeled. He's going to slip up, and when he does, you're going to come out on top. Why don't you just open it yourself? Whose door is it? Bet you didn't even know anything about the hanging. Damn it, fine, I'll look into it. We need to talk about that murder. Accept the task. Fuse the task for now. Why don't you just open it yourself? Harry, I'm a very busy man, and more importantly, I don't have that extraordinary physique you do. You look like you could run around all day. You want to send someone a message that the police are working for you. I repeat, I'm a very, very busy man, Mr. Kitsuragi, and therefore I must occasionally enlist outside help. So what will it be, Harry? Whose door is it? Oh, no one's. It's just a weasel. A weasel lives there. Nothing for you to worry about. What do you mean by weasel? A loud blabbering weasel. When weasels feel no one is watching, they start acting foolishly. He removes his glasses and rubs his nose. Just go there, unlock the door, and leave it open. It's been such a burden on me, Harry. I just want this to be over so I can discuss business with you. He puts his glasses back on. I bet you didn't even know anything about the hanging. Harry, my dear friend, I am what people call a local bigwig. I know everything that goes on in Martinez. Damn it, fine, I'll look into it. Fantastic, my friend. Just let me know when it's done and we can take our friendship to the next level. I hate this guy. <laughs> you can get the key from Manana. He's down by the gates. Manana's like a free agent in the Union. Special operations. Hardened socialist. A real free thinker, too. Oh, that guy. He'll tell you precisely where the door is. One last thing, Harry. Just open the door. You don't need to go in or anything. I just want that weasel to come home and see the unlocked door. I don't like this at all. Um... Could you help me get a dead body down from the tree? You might have noticed there's one hanging on the tree behind the hostel cafeteria. Oh my. Don't take this question personally. But why would I get involved in this matter? Mr. Clare, the man was hanged with a cargo belt. A steel reinforced cargo belt. It's safe to assume the Union had something to do with the murder. Besides, getting the body down would benefit all of us. It's a stain on the neighborhood. Also, I studied the footprints of the crime scene. Worker boots. Yeah, the belt thing. Say nothing. You're a community leader. Help your community out. Uh, worker boots. I can certainly see how having him up there might start affecting some real estate values. He likes his fat lips and smiles. But of course, all joking aside, I am going to help you. Oh. <laughs> he picks up a handset of a radio phone to his right, then clicks a button. Jean-Luc, my boy. I'm sending two police officers down. They have a dead body in a tree problem they need help with. Namely, they need it to be taken down. Yes, please. And Jean, please take it easy with the race science. That's a yes to getting the body down, no to the race science. 
He hangs up and turns back to you. You can find John Luke down at the gates. He's the big impressive one. You know, tattoos, muscles, ethnic looking. Can't miss him. Great guy. Great. Um, aren't you going to ask me how I got in? Harry, honestly, I'm just relieved you didn't get a hernia. A man your age... He really does see everything, doesn't he? A man my age? What are you implying? I'm at the peak of my abilities. I too am surprised by the resilience and athleticism of this tool I've been provided with. Tap your chest. My body's gonna break down any moment now. Probably push it to the limit. Say nothing. The big man peers at you over the rims of his glasses for a moment. Then interlaces his fingers and rests his chin on his hands. Anyway, I assure you, I am a very well-informed man. Information reaches me before I even get the chance to request it. So it seems. You call me Mr. Dubois, why? Of course. Let us dispatch with the formalities. You call me Everard, I call you Harry. That's what the Hanged Corpse called you. Harry. So that's really my name? My god, so it's true. I didn't want to believe it, but you are a fantastic science fiction amnesiac cop, aren't you? What are the odds of that? He shrugs with an amazed expression. I think the odds of that are very low. <laughs> what do you mean? It might be a good idea to hide your confusion. I mean, see what his game is first. My memory is fine, I'm just testing you. So good to hear that, Harry. Apparently my sources were wrong. However, if you did have a spot of memory trouble, I could help you out. With my big fat folder. Words flow like a river of honey from his lips. Oh, I hate this guy. I guess word has already reached him. No matter. Mm. No harm done. Are you trying to tell me you've gotten hold of some of our documents? Lieutenant inspects Ever over his spectacles. Mr. Kitsuragi, would you mind? Me and Harry are talking about his lost identity right now. Damn. Oh, you don't diss Kim like that. Don't just jump to the folder. That's not smart. Shows you're on the edge. Do some probing first. Okay. Okay, do you know anything about my family? Do I have a wife or kids or... Family? Harry, you're not a family man. There's not one peep of family in here. Unless you think you're a family man. Do you strike yourself as a family man, Harry? Uh, you're right, I don't. That's why I like you, Harry. A good man knows both his strengths and his weaknesses, and you, my friend. You are one of the all-time greats. Thanks. Let's get this straight. What is my full name? It's Harry. Harry Dubois. Wait, I thought you are Harry Dubois. <laughs> okay, I like it. I can work with that. I thought that's you. <laughs> no, I'm really, really not. You are Harry. Okay, I like it. And I can work with you, Harry. Now, what else can I do for you? <laughs> what kind of cop does it say I am? Well, Harry, if I were to sum you up in one word, it would be apologetic. <laughs> I'm sorry? <laughs> What? I'm not apologetic. I'm confident. Well, you sure come off as very confident in all our interactions, Harry. <laughs> You're a real man's man. <laughs> Thanks. Where'd you get that folder? Ah, this? My friends in your organization gave it to me, Harry. This translates into, haha, you guys are so corrupt. Uh. I find that very suspicious. May I have a look? I'm afraid this is meant for Union eyes only, Mr. Kitsuragi. I'm sure you understand. Please continue, Harry. Kim suspects something. Let's talk of other matters for a moment. Of course, Harry, of course. Wait. Let's not linger on personal details and amnesia. You wanted something from me. Hold on. Let's hear it's it, drama. Harry. Of course, Harry. Okay. Wait. You need this oh. to get in and out through the gate. Um, thanks. I was wondering how I was supposed to get out. Great. I wouldn't want to get stuck in here. Here. You're one of us now. A real red and white union man. Take care, Harry. Thanks. 
kingdom oh. of conscience. Nice. Oh, that's cool. The kingdom of conscience will be exactly as it is now. Moralists don't really have beliefs. Sometimes they stumble on one, like on a child's toy left on the carpet. The toy must be put away immediately and the child reprimanded. Centrism isn't change, not even incremental change. It is control over yourself and the world. Exercise it. Look up at the sky, at the dark shapes of the coalition airships hanging there. Ask yourself, is there something sinister in moralism? And then answer, no. God is in his heaven. Everything is normal on Earth. Okay. Okay, great. Uh, raise my learning cap for volition to five and logic to fly to five. Ugh. Well, that's cool. Epic. Um, let's look. What's this? Giant novelty check. This 20 by 50 centimeter check looks like it's meant to be handed over ceremoniously on a gala-like event. Supposedly exchanges for 25 real at your local frit store. Below the number, careful hand has written the words <laughs> Constable's rent? All of it. No, worthless in a pawn shop. Okay, great. It's for that. That improves my drama. Ugh, okay. Okay, what are my chances? Mr. Dubois, Let's talk about me. Uh, let's hear it, Harry. It's really high. As you yes! look at the folder, Evera covers it okay. with his hand and pets it. Is he trying to hide that it's not a real RCM folder? It certainly doesn't have the RCM stamp on it. Yeah, that's not an RCM folder. Okay, Harry, you got me. This is from the Census Bureau, not the RCM. Those Census Bureau people are absolutely corrupt. You should do something about them. Yeah, sure. He got the name from the Census Bureau and everything else from your actions here in Martinez. Yes, yes, Mr. Kitsaragi from the Census Bureau. Like I said, now I'm actually a very busy <laughs> man. So is there anything else I can do for you, Harry? That means he doesn't really know anything about you. Damn. But that is my real name, right? A pity. The mystery of you will have to remain a mystery for the time being. So the Census Bureau says my name is Harry Dubois? Yes, that's what I said. Try to keep up, okay? Let's move on. Mm-hmm. Okay, we'll talk about other things See later. See you soon, Debada. Just kidding, but not too much. <laughs> the finger gun. This is Marlin. Taxidermy fish that tells time. Okay, can I go back here? What's back there? Alright, great. <laughs> Wish I could say it was nice to meet you, but uh, it was not. And I also lost a bunch of my health. I definitely need more health. Didn't Kuno say he sold magnesium or something? Or is, does he just sell drugs? Because <laughs> can really use some healing items, I gotta say. Ah, I love chalky milk. Okay, great. So, um, well, we can get the body down now, right? All right, so let's get that body down. I, I'm excited. Okay, whoa. <laughs> Um, I'll see what's up with that crane at a later time. Let's get out all. Let's go. How do I get out of here? <laughs> Over here? You're telling me I can't just climb back up to that roof? Kim can give me a boost. Whoa. This is cool. What's this? This radio is emitting strange buzzing sounds. No, wait, no, 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 no! <laughs> I didn't mean to leave! Alright. Nice typewriter. Book. La Femme. What's that? Okay, uh. Wow. The leading intellectual organ of Martinez communism offers a radical Mazovian pers 
perspective on a range of contemporary issues. The cover features a stylized portrait of the late King Frisil, with a pair of white antlers growing out of his head. Okay, awesome. I'm sure I'll read that later. Standard office file cabinet. Drawers seem to be locked. Nope. On second glance, oh. someone has forgotten to properly close one of the drawers. Yeah, it's, it's drawn differently. It's like in cartoons in the old days. The old days. Like Tom and Jerry. It's not really the old days. But um, you could always tell when something was like going to be interacted with because it was animated instead of just painted into the background. It's unfortunate for the Union to just leave their paperwork laying around like this. Oh, yes. Let's see what's inside, he thinks. Open the drawer. The drawer opens smoothly. Inside is a well-organized selection of brown folders. Browse through the folders. Hundreds of documents containing logistical data. Two kinds of transactions stand out. Materials coming into Revachol from the outside world, from Muindi, Grad, and even Ilmara, and the same materials being handed over to companies inside Revachol, Kuron, Coal City, La Delta, and Jamrock are listed among the many districts where the imports are being sold. Anything interesting? It's hard to make sense of this thicket of company names, dates, quantities, and percentages. You try to focus, but the lines are getting blurry. Ow. Uh, force yourself to go through the folders. Whatever's oh. hidden here is hidden well. Concentration isn't enough. Only a trained accountant with a background in logistics would be able to really make sense of it. However, there is a little handwritten note stuck on the side of the drawer. Look at the note. It appears to be a to-do list written in large, uneven capital letters. Remember, Leo, Everard's shoes, special whirling borscht, water Everard's plants, sweet office floor, more banners. Oh, man. <laughs> Stuff that Leo has to do for him. All items on the list have been crossed out, and the note itself is crumpled. Look, Kim, a to-do to -do note with a list of errands for Everard. One of his aides must have left it. Nothing incriminating here. The special borscht seems a bit odd in the list. Take another look at the note. Remember, Leo, oh, Everard, okay. all items on the list have been crossed out. The drawer slides shut smoothly. All right. Someone left the coffee machine on. Dark liquid in the pot looks almost sentient. What's this? Postcard. I'm sad I sold my one postcard. I really shouldn't have done that. This laminated postcard. Oh wow, it's worth four fifty. This laminated postcard offers a glimpse across the river. A little more than a decade decade after the war, the Eastern Bank is already fully renovated. The hillsides are lush with gardens and residences. Someone's parked a small beige airship by the fountain. This postcard will sell for a pretty penny. Nice. This Dewey. This is a Dewey typewriter. Look, the model name is on the back. Every worker, member of the board, is written on the top of the flyers. At the bottom, the union logo and demand democracy. What's in here? Yes. <laughs> Thank God. Oh, neat office shades. What the heck? Frick yeah. Ha! <laughs> Those are so ugly, I love it. They were stuffed away in the dock workers union office. They're perfect for scribbling down paperwork when the sun tries to get in your eye. Good for staring down spec suspects too. Um, sure. Let's just take them off right now though. Alright, looks like all we can do for right now here. Uh, is this John... John something? So, oh, he's Mon. How'd you like our harbor? <laughs> You've been in there, he means. Talked to the boss man too, probably. Was nice enough. Labor utopia, not approvingly. Complete shit. <laughs> uh, was nice enough. It's but a rest area on the path leading across open plains. He notes solemnly, then re then turns to you, a wide smile adorning his face. Right. You talk to the boss, eye to eye, like men of the plane. 
If you have any more questions, I'm set to talk. Everett said you had a key to a door. A key, huh? What door is this key supposed to open? He said it belonged to a weasel. I was hoping you could tell me. I don't know, some whistleblowers, I think? I was hoping you could tell me. Of course. I got you. You don't know anything. He taps the side of his nose with a little wink. I got that key right here. And let me department. tell you, it's mighty good of you to help us out during the strike. Working class solidarity, as they say. I saw an opportunity and I took it. I'm a hustle grinder. I heard something about a weasel and didn't... And it didn't sound like a local polar weasel, if you know what I mean. Wink. <laughs> I'm not opening the store for myself. I'm opening it for all working men. I'm not really doing this for political reasons. <laughs> oh, so the none of the above type, are you? I yep. get it. I get it. <laughs> I like to keep my distance, too. But it doesn't matter. It's a good thing you're doing. Thanks. Sure. What you're looking for is a basement door behind the greenhouse. That's behind the whirling and rags. That's all I know. Our organization hmm. is what you call compartmentalized. Means we keep out of each other's business. Okay, but where did you get the key from? The janitor gave it to me. Nice fella. We talked about life and things that really, truly matter. Who? His gaze wanders off into the distance. None of this mess we're in. This jiving and juggling. What's it for? To feed our children, I guess. Anything else I should know about this task, this weasel person, when he'll be home? I'm more of a philosophical dog worker. I like to talk about the big picture stuff. Who I am, who you are, what we are fighting for. <laughs> he means he's not going to tell you because he doesn't know. But he will shoot his mouth off with you now that you're working for Everhart. Who he is and what they're fighting for. This is interesting. Ask him about the Hardy Boys. Uh, actually, do you know anything about the Hardy Boys? Los Ardis? They're an independent militant group. A bit too high strung, but it comes with the responsibility. They're sort of like you. Preserve the rule of law and all that. Except it's Everard's law. But really, they're just like you. He takes a swig from his flask. Any idea who killed the hangman? The mercenary, eh? Who could have killed him? That's indeed the question. Why even do such a thing? He shakes his head solemnly. The harbor is a prime area of suspicion. In your opinion, are the dock workers involved in the killing? What a thought. Why would noble workers resort to such a thing? Unless they were pushed, of course. They don't seem that noble to me. <laughs> pushed how? Your dead guy was an enemy combatant. Hold up, what does that mean? He was an agent of the opposition, attempting to undermine our honorable efforts. So he was a scab? Did you kill him? I ain't the murdering type. But that's just me. Large organizations like our union have all sorts of men. With all sorts of skills. Understood. This has been of limited use. Still, thank you. <laughs> no problem. I wish the best to you in your search. Sure, I'm glad it's not my search. He takes a sip from his flask. Good talking, you gotta run. Alright. Let's go see if we can get that body down. Uh, get the body down, go to Measurehead on the gates and ask him to get the body down. Oh, that's who we have to ask? <laughs> Shit. I feel like it's not gonna be that easy. Ever asked you to open the basement door behind the greenhouse in the backyard to intimidate the occupant. Do what you have to do. Ever has promised to give you info on the case in return. I guess I'll do that first and then ask him for help. I don't really feel good about it. Oh, wait. Let's exchange that comically oversized check for money. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> um... Is this about the questions again? Because I don't really know anything. Thanks, girl. I need to exchange this novelty check for cash. Give her the no novelty check and gain 25 real. Uh, wow. I didn't know you worked for the union, sir. She rolls up the giant novelty check. Looks like she's seen it before and slips it under the counter. Anything else I can do for you? No, you don't work for the union. The union works for you by supplying you with cash. That's right, baby. Let's uh, get rid of my bottles, too. Your bottles clunk into the machine, nice. and the money appears with a satisfying jingle. You're a richer man now. 
Sick. I got $62, man. I'm loaded. <laughs> that is really exciting. Now I don't have to worry about my money that I have to pay in my room. Now I kind of got more money than I know what to do with. Let's unlock that door. Poor person who lives down there. Oh! What if we try calling this thing again? Hold a call box with a matrix of push buttons. Lists all the companies in the East Delta Commerce Center. Slipstream SCA. No. Really? The last thing you need in your life is more hysteric emotions. Forget it. Find something else to do. Damn. What? <laughs> what? I'm sad. I had a high chance. Alright. Hi, Kuno. Um. Wait, I need to go around the other side. Okay. Is this it? This must yeah. be it. The basement door is weather-worn. The copper nails holding the upholstery in place have turned green from sea air, and there's a knocker shaped like a lion's head. I feel bad whoever lives here. Carefully knock. You knock silently. The upholstery muffles the sound. No response comes from the apartment. I guess no one is in? Press your ear against the door. The leather upholstery is worn and rough against your jaw. You don't hear any movement. In fact, it's oddly silent in the yard around you. No birds chirp. I don't like this. Lieutenant, what's your opinion of this task we're undertaking? Let's be honest. This isn't what I joined the RCM for. But every day tells you something new about yourself. The lieutenant replies, still inspecting the padded door. Apparently. Working with the local union boss to get info on an investigation is not something I'm squeamish about. So you don't mind if I unlock the door? <laughs> I mind that the local thug is using the RCM for his busy work. But if this gets us to the bottom of this hanging, then I'm willing to look over it. On the other hand, we could just leave and tell Evrat we opened the door. No one seems to be tailing us to see if we actually did it. That's a good point. Lie to Evrat, that's also an option? Yes. Presenting a fabrication is known to get results here and there. <laughs> you took this task. You make the call. The door is right here. You can just open it and be done with this. Besides, if you never open it, you're never going to find out what's behind the door. I really want to see what's behind there. Sorry. You try to be <laughs> as silent as you can. It takes a bit of rattling of the handle to loosen the bolt. Finally, the door unlocks with a small clack. Thoughts race through your head. Only curiosity could account for stepping over that threshold. Maybe there's treasure in there. A white alligator. A fountain of quicksilver. Let's see. I am really curious. If I wasn't curious about what was behind there, I would have just lied to him, but... Maybe we can lock it on our way out. Whoa. It's kind of dark in here. Uh. Whoever lives here admires fair-haired fantasy heroes with big muscles. <laughs> I can relate. Oh. In intersolate. What does that say? <laughs> Intersolary dress shirt? Pressed and spotless gleaming white shirt. The kind that serious men wear. At serious intersolary offices. Not yet, piss soaked or come stay. <laughs> okay, well, let's, let's see. Let's see here. Nice. So wait, what's the difference? Oh, that was mine. And this is the new one. Okay, great. It's nice. It's very nice. I look very professional. Yes, I do. Oh, excuse me, Kim. <laughs> you can almost feel the warmth of, of the red sun on the flag. This is the flag of Rivershaw, the suzerainty. What's with the sun? This isn't just one sun, but there are little suns dancing around the big sun. This is the sevenfold sun miracle. 
What's the sevenfold sun miracle? It's an optical atmospheric anomaly the first settlers saw. Happens in cold weather. Six small suns around the big one. This complex halo phenomena is how old Revachol got its flag. Lieutenant, the old flag of Suzerain. Mm-hmm. The tenant is an old-fashioned guy. <laughs> he doesn't sound very happy. By old-fashioned, he means very right-wing. <laughs> Don't bow down to the flag. The flag doesn't seem to mind. It's just a colorful fabric with a sun sewn onto it. Like all feudal flags, it looks like a children's drawing. So it's like the equivalent of having a confederate flag in your house, basically. The book titled The Hidden World of Walking Sticks lies open. Put my flashlight in my hand. Oh. Small suitcase full of clothes. Guess they're staying over? Okay. Guess there's not much else to look at. A row of mugs sits on the shelf. Each one depicts a human figure. A dark-skinned woman grinning amidst mysterious symbols. A broad-shouldered man shoveling potatoes and others. Tap on the mugs. A little ring. Though cheerful, the images on the ceramic make you vaguely uncomfortable. They had the racist mug, didn't they? The images betray a lack of interest in human beings. They are merely unflattering caricatures. What do I mean uncomfortable? The owner of these mugs doesn't like people of other ethnicities very much. Typical asshole. This person is unhappy. <laughs> the lieutenant picks up one of the mugs then puts it back down with a look of disdain. I'm beginning to feel better about <laughs> breaking into this man's apartment. What about your yellow man mug and compare? Yes, your broken mug friend would feel very much at home here. The same humor, the same mocking lines. There's the missing teen soldier. Whoever lives here might have used the Whirling's container to dump his trash. The lieutenant looks at the mugs next to each other. And now they've drawn the ire of the Union. The plot thickens, as they say. <laughs> An interesting little clue. Let's see where this goes. Clues have a way of magically connecting to other clues down the road. Perhaps you should break into apartments more often. <laughs> Do you really think it's the same person who put the dead man's clothes in the trash? Who knows? I'm not expecting too much from this clothes in the trash lead either way. It might turn out to be some random local matter, but still, a nice coincidence. You could ask Everard who this person is once you're done here. Okay. Yeah, I don't really feel bad about this anymore. <laughs> oh, what's that? Hold it. Nice. Thank God. All right. Well, looks like that's it. Yeah, I don't, uh... I don't really feel bad anymore. <laughs> yeah, let's take this flashlight out of my hand. <laughs> well, I got a cool shirt from it. So, uh, all is not lost. I don't feel bad about breaking into his house because he's a bad person. Oh, hi. I know your dirty secrets, girl. Can't hide from me forever. Alright, let's talk to Measurehead. Alright, dude, I talked to your boss. How do you like me now? Shit, get back upstairs. Alright. Please respect me. <laughs> Race descent has only worsened since I last saw you. You have really let yourself. Please go. help us. Ever told you to help us get the body down from the tree? So it was. You surmounted the harbor wall in a display of athletic prowess to reach my superior. Then had him give me an order. I salute your cunning and I will remove the body from the tree. With my bare hands. You're so <laughs> noble, Measurehead. Oh my god. There's a but. But 
While I am gone, someone must stand guard on the bridge. That someone needs to be what? you. Both of you. Lieutenant, what if we don't want to do that? This is the uncomfortable result of not taking it down ourselves. I can deal with a compromise. Eh, true. Listen to your little friend. He is wise in his childlike way. His mysterious race may yet prove fierce competition to my heroic haplogroup. <laughs> okay then, wait here while Measurehead goes. Babe, see that they stay here the whole time. <laughs> Babe. <laughs> Alright. I guess this is, uh... Good god, those are some low-rise jeans. <laughs> Look at him go. <laughs> All right. The woman's gaze follows Measurehead as he leaves. Same here, girl. So you guys are like cops or something? <laughs> Why are you with Measurehead? Yeah, we're the law around here. Apparently so. We're just trying to keep things from going to shit. Why are you with Measurehead? Look at him. His craniometric perfection. Are you cops or what? Yeah, we're the law around here. Cool. I like men with guns and power. I'm Katya, by the way. The woman twirls her hair. You hear that? That sound. He's breaking something. Nice. Yeah, Jean-Luc must be really tearing it up oh. over there. I wish I could see it. <laughs> Measurehead's babe. <laughs> I also wish I could see it. I don't. I've seen enough of that dead body already. Look at you! RCM rent -a cops Guarding that bridge like Evrot's lapdogs! Is this where it's at now? The RCM is for sale! And who are you? What is your business here? Why are your clothes for <laughs> sizes too small for you? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I'll work with whoever I want. Yes, I am an unbelievably corrupt cop. I am a corrupt- I am corrupt every opportunity I get. That's none of your business. Um... It's none of your business. A shrill laughter interrupts you, echoing across Martinez. It's Kuno. Then, the man turns to look behind him at the behemoth appearing around the corner, approaching him, walking past him. Hi. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> God damn, that walk. The corpse has been removed from the tree. Stand down and congratulate yourself. You have sided with Ray's victory today. He brushes wooden flakes off his hands. There has no, been no side choosing. We did what we had to to keep order. And what you had to do was to become a union man for all to see. Great. Looks like we're choosing a side without even meaning to. But we got the buddy down, so let's go. Let's see what he did. I'm scared. <laughs> Let's see. Uh-oh. Damn. Whoa, he knocked down the whole branch? Sorry, Kuno. You have nothing else to throw rocks at. You missed a good show before. A kid came by and completely fucked the tree to pieces. He fucked the tree up! By the way, Kipt is a racial slur. <laughs> oh, I don't want to say that word either. Total blank use language like that. Congratulations, Kuno, you just made yourself up. A... Oh yeah, kids, not an approval. But don't you mean... D oh. Stop using the K word. Can't tell Kuno what words to use, fucking Kipt. He imbues the last syllable with a special kind of joy. What is this, a word museum? You want to belong to a museum, Kuno, with the old people? 
Fuck you. Kuno says kipped if he wants to. Kuno's dad says kipped all the time. Kipped's a cool word. Kipped, kipped, kippity, kipsy, kipped. Kippity, kip, 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 kipped. Kip, kip, kipped. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Shut it down, see. The cunt has business to do. He turns to you, Victorious. Okay, I'm off. All right, time to inspect this thing. I mean the body. It's not a thing. I bet. Let's see here. The corpse lies on the ground among the remains of an absolutely demolished pine wood branch. It's gently laid on one side. Beautiful. Wipe a tear from your eye. Well, it's down. Celebrate in a more reserved manner. Nice. Mr. Messerhead has done a good job. Nothing is too broken or compromised. The victim is ready for a field autopsy. A field autopsy? Yes. One, investigation of the scene. Two, initial examination of the victim. Three, field autopsy. Four, transportation of the body to the morgue. We are on number three. Okay. The fuck are they on about? Leave us alone, Kuno. Cop's gonna cut his shit up. Don't we have someone else for this? A doctor? Don't we have to cut someone else? Don't we have someone else to cut his shit open? <laughs> Got it. The lieutenant adjusts his glasses and takes a deep breath. First, what exactly is a field autopsy? Come on, officer. You know what a field autopsy is. You've done a hundred of them. Actually, it appears I have forgotten what a field autopsy is. Do you have another pair of gloves? <laughs> uh, I have forgotten what it is. Fine. It's a three-part form to be filled out on the scene by the detectives responsible. One takes note, the other dictates. The goal is to establish cause of death. Do we need a scalpel for it? A scalpel is not always required. I hope this is one of those cases. Latex gloves are, however. Do you have another pair of gloves? Unfortunately, no. Okay, I'll take it like a man. I have gardening gloves, maybe they're good enough? They are better than nothing. Tell you what, I perform the anatomical side of things while you will take notes. Where should I take these notes? In my paperwork? Take out your ledger. Yes, you see, the field autopsy form is the one on red copy of paper. Points to the bright red pages at the end. Uh, open your ledger. Oh, wait, tell me something, dead man. Shoot, loony Rooney. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was like, that doesn't sound familiar. It's because I had to voice him last time because he wouldn't speak. Okay, enough. I already asked you a lot Come of back questions. later, Coppo. Amuse yourself with my frank manners and my memento mori features, if possible. Also, see me in your dream. Open your ledger at the field autopsy form. The dead man stares in silence as you crack open the ledger. The bright red paper is covered in boxes and lists, describing the condition of his skin and organs in three parts. Whoops. Above those, an 11 field info form needs filling out first. It begins with... Number one, assistant. Let's jump ahead to the three-part summary. Uh, number one, assistant. That's you. Right, Harry Dubois. The corpse is indifferent to your scribblings. Just lies there. The next box says... Coroner's case number... KK57-0803. KK equals Kim Kitsuragi. Oh. 57 equals Precinct 57, followed by his date 0803 and time of arrival 0815 on the scene. He's indexed the case after himself, not you. Makes sense. <laughs> That's because he doesn't want to bring up the messy question of your initials. Shouldn't we file the coroner's case under me? Technically, I arrived at the scene before you. 
This is write it down. Next. Name. N.A. Next. Date of birth. N.A. Age. Hmm. Roughly 50. Right. <laughs> Squiggly line. 50. <laughs> the corpse looks ageless, like meat on a hook. Race. Mondial. Write it down. The pudgy mess of curdled meat looks neither Mondial nor anything other. Sex. Little monster exclaims energetically. Male. <laughs> Pigs can have sex! <laughs> right, fucky, fucky. <laughs> right, male. Right, pig's gonna have sex. <laughs> male. Nor does he look male with his pregnant belly and indistinguishable face. Uh, date of death. We're still going with March 4th. 51. Right, 04, 03, 51. What else? 9. Body identified by is non applicable. 10. Case number is the same as the coroner's case. KK 57 0503 0815 listens motionless with the cargo belt still around his neck. Only one box remains. Evidence of treatment. None. At least not after the initial examination. Uh... What is treatment, anyway? Interfering with the body's position or wounds post-mortem. Don't overdo it. It's okay to be unsure. I'm not so sure. Didn't the footprints look like he was carried over? They'd have to have incapacitated and carried him over. This man was more than a match for untrained dog walkers. He places his hand on the dead man's chest as if in preparation. Your central nervous system recognizes this gesture. It's the stations of the breath. Ecclesiastic, religious in nature, a holdout from pre-Delorean burial rites. It takes him two seconds to perform. Then, somewhere in Jamrock North, a small wood shed behind Rosencrantz Row. Lieutenant Nick Feuerbach puts his hand to the chest of a small corpse, no larger than a monkey. It's raining outside, light drizzle. There is darkness in the shed. Elsewhere yet, an obese female sits in a wicker chair, her silhouette ball-like against the window. Outside, Grand Crudon. The day is turning dim for Sergeant Mac Dawson. Hand extended. He approaches to make sure she is dead more than anything else. These are the guys from my precinct, I think. And so, all across Jamrock, Coal City, G R I H, 42 deceased persons found today. 42 stations of breath. Damn. We should start the post mortem. Turn the page. The corpse cannot feel Kim's hand on his chest, it no longer meaningfully interacts with its surroundings. A thicket of boxes and lists on red copy of paper tries to answer why. The descriptions in this game are so good. External examination summary. Clothes. The deceased wears armored boots and white briefs. The make of the briefs is Babrodin, I think. Let's see. He turns the body onto its side to check the underwear label. <gasps> see, it's happening. Babrodin, yes. Inexpensive. Size M. Color white. The disappointment is palpable. The red haired thing was expecting something more. Liberate. Fucking degenerates? <laughs> Write it down. The boots are ceramic, vitreous enamel. They are fused to his skin from blood flowing downward post mortem. Ew. Removal of the boots is left for processing. Write it down. The boot has a serial number. It's E50.100.1000. The lines between the plates are in the shape of the alphanumerical. The number is purposefully concealed by the design. Write it down. Tattoos. He stands up, feet planted on either side of the body. 
The upper torso is covered in a single continuous tattoo resembling a national pattern. It reaches from the right shoulder to the heart. The ink is blue and white. The assistant has a color photograph of the markings to be added to the case files as document A1. The photo is taken on the scene using a triggered mini. Write it down. The deceased has a cargo lashing belt around his neck tied with a hangman's knot. Color yellow. Length three meters. There is a buckle on the other end. Well nourished, athletically built, measuring 1.8 meters. Generally consistent with age, about 50. Preservation is good. Ambient temperature, below freezing. Hmm. Body hair is light brown. Distribution is consistent with age. The deceased had male pattern baldness. Hair is combed back, short. Touch the corpse's hair before moving on. Write it down. Why would I touch it? I'm not gonna touch it. Write it down. <laughs> Lividity is consistent with hanging. The head is congested. Contusions are present on the head, chest, and thighs. Consistent with stones thrown post-mortem. Low velocity. Cool. This just makes you wonder how many of these cases that Kim has went through in order to sort of recall all of this information. Not really recall it, but just sort of present it in this way, very professionally. Fucking low velocity! You think Kuno doesn't know what you're talking about? Velocity was fucking max. Talking shit about Kuno's velocity. <laughs> In addition, there are bite marks on the face, scalp, and chest, consistent with predation. Write it down, but it meant for a high velocity. <laughs> oh shit! I didn't mean to do that. No, I didn't mean to do that. I just healed myself by accident. Frick. I didn't mean to do that. Okay, write it down. I hit the wrong button. You get your mark. The lieutenant produces a small folding knife. With the other hand pulling on the bell, he starts cutting into the polyester. The stench is horrid. After a while, it's obvious the material cannot be cut. The steel wiring. Ah, there's too much of it. We need to remove the bell so we can get to the ligature mark. He concedes, breathless. You got just the right tool for that. The chain cutters. Oh yeah, I am prepared. Pet the chain cutters. Good thing we got these chain cutters. Pull out the rubber gripped cutters. Always good to think ahead. Now... He points to the rope squeezing the dead man's neck. We need to cut the belt to see the ligature mark below. Carefully. With as much precision as you can. I'm so pissed that I healed myself by accident. That's twice now. See, my pig is gonna fuck his head off. No, he ain't. Your pig's a boring fuck. Ew, yes, I'm Kuno's pig, I agree. It's not your pig, Kuno. Look for a good spot to cut. The belt is equally tight around the whole circumference of his neck. Swelling over the edges like white bread rising from the east. Let's try it. Shit. the cutters right under the knot. That seems like a smart idea. Yeah, somewhere there. Already great deep in the man's flesh. Then you will take them to get a better hold. Then rotate some more. A really, really bad smell is coming from there now. And some kind of cracking sound. Fuck it, fuck. <laughs> the lieutenant looks by, somewhat worried as you summon power words to your aid. And now I've cut some more. Yeah, fuck him. Fuck that faggoty. Corpse fucking time. Told you my pig was hardcore. I should have a go first. I think I have a strategy. No, give them back. I was just about to cut it off. Just let him work. He sinks the cutters into the knot, preparing to perform the cuts with his elbow to his <laughs> for precision. Yes, that's much better form than you had. Yeah. Snap. The knot is slashed. Another cut and the belt falls apart like a flower bouquet, revealing the dead man's neck. 
and the dark red ligature mark around it. Here. He hands you the chain cutter's back and kneels closer to the body, running his finger along the dark red groove until he comes to a gap. He's so kind about it, but I feel stupid. The rope rises to a point, leaving a gap in the ligature mark. The suspension point is in the back of the neck, on the nape. As it ought to. This is where its grip on the curdled meat is gentlest, pulling up. Ew. Hemorrhaging is observed on the skin, above and below the ligature mark. The mark is well pronounced, consistent with a drop from 1 or 1.5 meters. So he was just dropped like that. Chest is intact, normal contour, abdomen is protuberant, pelvis intact, genitalia. He pulls down the man's underpants. Oh god, Kuna's gonna freaking. No! <laughs> Let's get out of and see! I fucking knew it! This is clearly what they've been waiting for. Come on. Ever since the autopsy began. The lieutenant is trying to make it as boring as possible. Genitalia is male and unremarkable. No evidence of injury. Does it look like he was enjoying his moment? Can we stop? Write it down and move on. Back is symmetrical and intact. Jeez. Upper and lower <laughs> extremities are intact, but asymmetrical. There are combat injuries on the right hand, thigh, and hip. In addition, I see smaller, residual scars, too numerous to count, covering about 30% of his skin. Write it down. Last item, hands. He takes a man's right hand in his, inspects it, and then moves on to the other hand. Let the lieutenant work alone. Hands are clean. No sign of a recent struggle. Were we inspecting any? Expecting any? I was. Maybe I'm just not seeing them. Honestly, this stench is making it hard for me to think at the moment. Working so close to the fumes coming Oof. from the corpse must be hard. You realize suddenly that the lieutenant has been barely keeping it together, these past two items. Can we give him his handkerchief back? Ooh. <laughs> That's all for the external. <laughs> well done. What next? <laughs> he turns to the side to breathe. It's not enough. He buries his face in the sleeve of his jacket. You hear a muffled voice. Poor, <laughs> poor Kim. Internal ex examination. Summary. Uh-oh. Internal. Uh-oh. Oh, shit. Central nervous system. I have nothing. Do you have anything on this man's central nervous system? You don't even have a joke. <laughs> nope. Right, N.A. Muscoskeletal. Purge fluid is coming from the mouth. Not injury related. Eyes and tongue protuberant. Hiery bone. Let's see. With his eyes almost closed, <laughs> the lieutenant puts his hand on the dead man's throat and begins to massage it gently. A rotting smell erupts from the mouth. Purge fluid runs down his lips, black and viscous. Yeah, jack that fucker off! The hyoid bone is fractured. The rest of the musculoskeletal system is intact. Unremarkable. Write it down. <laughs> Respiratory system. Back hunched as if in prayer, he begins to pry open the dead man's jaws. He stops to exert more force. Both hands are used. Oral <laughs> it's shows so no gross. Issues. The victim has received a dental implant, possibly after a combat wound. Mouth swollen. Hemorrhaging present in mucosa of the lips and mouth. Look inside the dead man's mouth. No scream. No sigh of relief rises from the darkness inside. It's humid there. Sickly sweet air, unlike anything living. You feel like you're about to throw up again. Straight in that mouth of his. Write it down before I throw up. <laughs> Hepatobiliary. N.A. Why? Don't we have anything? Ah. Are you a hepatobiliary expert? He looks at the corpse's stomach with a mixture of tiredness and disgust. I don't think so. Neither am I. And that's it? That's it. Right, N.A. 
Same for toxicology and serology. N.A. Right, N.A. Cardiovascular. The body exhibits heavy lividity. Blood has gathered in the hands, feet, and neck. Hypostasis is visually consistent with the hanging. I still have his handkerchief. Can I give it back to him? <laughs> Gastrointestinal. He breathes a sigh of approaching relief. This is the last field on the list. He looks around to the ground, the pool of feces there. This will do. Digested semi-solid food in stomach. Voila. He touches the corpse's bloated lower abdomen briefly. Write it down. Admit the voila. <laughs> Write it down. Keep the voila. What's next on the list? Descriptions of injuries. Summary. Let's see. We have bite marks, contusions on the head and chest, and a ligature mark encircling the neck. You'll need three fields. Leave a fourth one, too. What about the injuries we have inflicted? Oh, so we inflicted them? <laughs> okay, I have inflicted. <laughs> okay, so there's an incision on the thorax from a chain cutter. I wouldn't mention it. Better not to muddy the waters. I agree, the waters are muddy enough. See? These pigs are fucking corrupt. <laughs> now I'm just smart. Why don't you fuck him if you love him so much? Now, injuries. Okay. What's the fourth injury field for? Nothing. Just in case. Number one, bite marks. <clears throat> Head, chest, and scalp bite mark injuries. Predation by birds has caused damage to the body. Odontologist does not need to be consulted. And your opinion, officer? Beneath the description, there are two boxes waiting to be ticked. Opinion, fatal entry. Non-fatal, post-mortem. Agreed. Next injury? Contusions. So, the scalp bleeds from a post-mortem head injury. A stone. The injury does not have the rim of an early inflammatory response. A perpetrator on the scene has confessed to causing it post-mortem. At maximum velocity, fucko! Has confessed to causing it at maximum velocity. <laughs> the lieutenant's admission has caused great gratitude in Kuna. He is silent with it. Write it down. Coagulated blood sticks to his scalp and chest where the countless stones have hit the dead man. Beneath the description of injury. Two boxes. Okay. Postmortem head injury. Non-fatal postmortem. Right. Next. Look at your marks. A dark red abraded ligature mark encircling the neck with a gap on the nape measuring, let's say, seven centimeters. The hyoid bone is fractured. The cervical colon intact. Sorry, I was checking something. <laughs> I see hemorrhaging on the skin above and below the ligature mark. Depth of the mark, one centimeter. No signs of clawing on the neck. Below the note, two customary boxes wait to be ticked. The man's head jerks to the side. The ring around his neck is visible. Oof. Uh... Opinion, fatal injury. That's it. We have established cause of death. It's not much, and it leaves much to be questioned. But it's a start. Cool. Let's wrap this up. I pronounce this field autopsy over. First, how did it go? <laughs> well, we established probable cause of death. Some would say that's the goal of an autopsy. What else? <laughs> We were thorough with the list of injuries, too. We described them all in detail. What is there to say? Given the circumstances, it was a professional field autopsy. What now? I need a copy of that autopsy form. Then I will drive him to Faubourg. Provide out a copy of autopsy pages. For processing. He looks at the dead man one more time, then at the slip of red paper in his hand, then at the corpse again. He's thinking. Did I miss something? You tilt your head, also looking at the corpse. Uh, 
Let's bag him. Take him away. Let the lieutenant take the body away without further examination. Establish probable cause. Hold on. Let's leave for a moment and then go back. Oh. Sick. <laughs> nice. Okay. He doesn't want to say it. And the little guy gets smaller and smaller as you rise above the dollhouse world. You see him out in the snow on the streets, in the shop on the corner, and finally in a matchbox house. Sitting by the window, white flowers on the windowsill. You can smell them from up there. It's awful. A white morning. A modern death. Divorce or something similar. All you can do is put more distance between you and him. Make him smaller. Make him less you. Okay. Oh, 20% zoom out distance. That's kind of cool, actually. Sick. All right. Nice. Um, all right, I have two skill points here. Let's up my pain threshold. <laughs> I need to do that. And also... My... Perception. Let's do that. Cool. Let's see if I can... Okay. The lieutenant adjusts his glasses and takes a deep breath. Let's try one more time. You run yeah. your hands over the victim's cold body, his limbs, his torso with its swollen organs. Maybe you should be more thorough. Look under his fingernails like Kim already did. His fingernails have turned dark. They're chipped and quite long. There is dirt under them. That's all. Do you think we missed something? You can't shake the feeling that there are more secrets concealed in the flesh before you. Uh, yes, there's something we're not seeing. I've got a gut feeling that there's more to this corpse. Okay, well, we are in leave of Mortis here. He is disintegrating. We need to refrigerate the body if we want to conduct another examination. And we need to do it fast. The ice bear fridge! Okay, where do we find a fridge for the body? Hey, wasn't <laughs> yeah. there a giant ice bear sarcophagus? Yes! Oh my god, he points towards the commercial area. Why, yes there was. An absolutely colossal fridge still plugged in, literally in the shape of an ice bear. So that's what the ice bear is shaped <laughs> Why, yes there was. Now, detective, I've rarely been disappointed by the size of a giant ice bear fridge, but I think we should still take a look at it first. Make sure it's big enough before we carry him over. Let's move. <laughs> With every hour, whatever we are looking for in the deceased will become harder to find. He closes his notebook and cracks his neck. All right, let's go. Look at that ice bear fridge. <laughs> that is really funny. I knew that ice bear fridge was good for something. Yes. Yes. Alright, it looks like it's good enough, right? The bear's eyes are still glowing red, watching over all ice cream wrappers hidden inside its belly. So what do you think of this fridge, Kim? It looks big enough for two corpses. It's certainly an eccentric choice, but it is capacious and cold enough, too. But the optics on this are awful, he thinks. We need to be as silent as we can. Shall we go and get the body then? I'll take the head, you take the feet. The stairs won't be easy, but we'll manage. The two of you. Easily. Okay, let's do this. Clap your hands. The body is heavier <laughs> than you expected and stinkier. It takes half an hour to get it down to the basement. Oh then my God. ten more minutes to stuff it into the fridge. The lieutenant takes a step <laughs> back. To admire your handiwork. It's so awful. Beautiful. That <laughs> body in ice bear fridge. This is some of the best body work I've ever done. <laughs> He's still swiping his hands in his handkerchief. You've definitely earned a drink after this. Perhaps even some pagan rites. <laughs> really? You think it's good work? He obviously doesn't. Not sure I believe you. Yes, we need to celebrate before pagan rites bring out the meat and set it on fire. Not sure I believe you. Of course you don't. Look at that. What have we done? 
We stuffed a dead body in a nice bare fridge. <laughs> this does not leave this room. He means it. He doesn't want to be the nice <laughs> bear cop. <laughs> oh god. I think this is a glorious achievement and people need to hear about it. We did our best with the means at our disposal. Yeah, I'm not proud either, but we did find a fridge. <laughs> this isn't police work, Kim. It's art. We're artists and this is our vision. I'm uh, not proud either, but we did find a fridge. As impressive as the fridge is, this is a small victory among numerous defeats. Come on, cheer up. At least we've stopped the body from decomposing further. Now you can conduct another inspection under controlled circumstances. Okay, let's try this one more time, even though it's still really low. Your arms oh. reach out and your eyes close, <laughs> as if by their own volition. Did not think it's that would dark work. all around. You feel cold, slippery flesh, first with your fingertips, then under the palm of your hand. What is this? His face, his cheeks, his nose, his fat, swollen lips. Like a spider, your hand crawls over his features. Everything <laughs> is silent. Crawl up his nostrils? They are swollen shut. You need to really push to get in. Push your fingers in his mouth. <laughs> Only the little one fits. The flesh changes shape as you bore in, searching for something in the cartilage. The thing you're looking for, it's not there. Crawl out, spider. Put your fingers in his mouth. Oh, oh this is so gross. The oral cavity is cold and moist. A ball-like tongue attaches itself to the base of the mouth, lolling around like a scallop you're on the right track oh these descriptions play with it this feels right the tongue moves free <laughs> in the cavity the mucus of the mouth is slippery delicate to touch from the soft meat teeth are budding hard pearls of bone in the gums and in the back of the mouth can you feel it you're so close rip his jaws open now look in Open your eyes and look. A vision of black and dark red death, pried open by your naked hands and studded with teeth. Looks like he's laughing. Death fumes rising from the throat. What is and it? And there, in the back of his mouth, above the bell of the uvula, right in the soft palate. Someone stuff something in his mouth? You see a hole, barely visible to the human eye. It is swollen shut almost vanished no larger than 0.4 centimeters oh. in radius the edges appear darkened say fuck yeah touch it with your finger gently <laughs> fuck yeah mm -hmm. keep going he agrees a black trickle of liquid runs into his throat from the wound so this part of the <laughs> let's play will be very quiet because my whole family has gone to sleep like I said, it's late at night, so i um, trying to be as quiet as possible. So, a hole barely visible to human eye. Huh. Is it a- it's not a bullet wound, is it? Is it- could it be? The black trickle of liquid runs down the from the wound. Put your finger in. Your index fits right in there. A tight tunnel of flesh opens up. Tissue damage. Wide enough for two fingers. As you push both in, you reach through his mouth, right this into his brainstem. Brainstem? Yes, that's what this part is called. You've seen the drawings. You've studied them. Feel around first. The basal ganglia feels clumpy. What entered here has torn apart his reptilian complex. Push deeper. Your fingers slide into the remains of his limbic system. There is no resistance. It's gelatinous. The slug-like structures are damaged too. The tearing extends deep into both hemispheres. This is disgusting. There's a cavity cut right between the hemispheres. The lieutenant answers with the sound of his pen on paper. Push deeper. Your fingers are all the way in now, reaching toward the inside of his skull. The cavity goes further. But the entry wound isn't wide enough for the rest of your hand to follow. All the muscles in your body harden. Time to enter him. What? Punch a hole through his mouth, wriggle in. 
Just wriggle in. Your fingers reach toward his skull. His cerebral cortex feels like jelly. Cold jelly. Strange fluid streams down your wrist as you push deeper until you feel it on the tip of your finger. A bullet? Sharp, serrated material. The edges cut right into your skin. The pain is barely noticeable under the adrenaline rush. I feel a solid object right under the skin. Can you... can you get to it? His, he searches his pockets for something. Inspect the skull first. There's a tiny crack. A protrusion in the cranium. Right in the back of his head. Your finger must be pointing straight at it. From the inside. The object that is in there stops just short of the skull. In the encephalus. Knocking this tiny fracture into the cranium. He was shot first and then hung. We have the makings of a very small exit wound here. Interfacing. Oh, God. Please. Oh, come on. Come on. What? It was an 82%. You push your hand further in. Whatever is in there keeps rolling between your fingers as you beckon it to come out. A little help, Lieutenant. Out comes his small folding knife. Man. The Lieutenant moves its blade across the man's skull, searching for the exit wound. <sighs> I'm so upset. There. Nod towards the protrusion. Mm -hmm. Withdraw your hand four centimeters, please. Pull your fingers back and nod. With a crack, he punches the knife in the skull. Then, one more time, and one more, Ugh. until the bone comes loose like eggshell. Inside, you feel the jelly move from his poking. The object is still under your finger. Can you push it out? A small flower of metal blossoms from the man's head, followed by your finger. Shit. <laughs> A bullet. Unknown calibre. Rifled. You may remove your hand from the victim's head now, officer. Well done. Damn. Here's your prize. He drops the bullet in an evidence bag and puts it in your hand. Your other hand, the one not covered in blood and cerebral cortex. Ew. We need to add an item to the injury list. Injury number four. Oval entry wound with an abrasion collar. Soft palate. Back of mouth. High velocity. Temporary cavity in brain tissue. Small exit wound on the occiput. How does that sound? Sounds like heaven. Sounds about right. Opinion, fatal injury. Agreed. And one last thing. We should amend injury number three. Ligament mark. New opinion, non-fatal. Post-mortem. Treatment. He's proposing the bullet was the real cause yes. of death. Yes. And the hanging an attempt to conceal this fact. Yes. Treatment. Look, the ligament mark, the fractured hi hi how you say it? Hyode? Hi hyode? Bone? It was all treatment. Yes, and the belt around his neck. The hanging. Even dragging him to the yard. All of it was done after this man was already dead. Agreed. I have had my doubts since you showed me the tracks. Why did they carry him over? Why not march him, I thought. There was no satisfying explanation. Right. There have been other signs too. Small details. Everything is too neatly designed for us to assign probable cause here. As we did, foolhardily. Well, no hmm. more. Find the bolt before you get fooled. I'm so happy. We almost fell for it, he thinks. Almost. There yes. is a course. The very real possibility he was both shot and hanged. Who would do this? Why would anyone do this? I need to wash myself. Uh, maybe they just shot him while they hanged him. To put him out of his misery? It's possible, but it doesn't explain all the other dubious things here. Yeah. Lack of struggle, primarily. I may be intellectually sloppy, but I prefer one theory at a time. And this just smacks of treatment to me. Who would do this? That's for us to find out. But this, it will make finding them just a little easier. Why would anyone do this? 
to hide something. The real killer, the real motivation, what really happened here? I think I need to wash myself. Maybe the bullet will hold more answers. I think I need to wash myself. Oh, you really, really do. I am <laughs> glad to hear you say that. Your room in the Whirling in Rags should come with a bathroom. Be sure to make use of it in the evening. Maybe the bullet holds more answers? Yes, we should take a closer look at it. I am certain it has more to tell us. This little thing could reveal much about the weapon that shot it. What happens next? We bag the corpse and carry him to the holding pen of my kinema. I can transport him to processing myself, but I will be gone for the rest of the day. You'll be gone? What should I do in the meanwhile? <laughs> Work on the case. Tend to personal matters. Try not to do anything too dangerous. An officer needs backup in a neighborhood like this. I'll leave that choice to you. And one more thing. Great work, detective. He looks you in the eye. The word lingers in the air of the basement. Far away ice cream makers are buzzing and the sea wind blows outside. Thank you. Detective. <laughs> oh yeah, is that... No, he's called me detective before. Damn. Thank you. <laughs> Let's bag him, Kim. The lieutenant takes the body away. You work alone for the rest of the day. But I don't wanna. I guess we have to. All right. Takes out a shiny black body bag and starts pulling the plastic over the dead man's face. I will need a little help carrying him. You take the hands. I'll take the legs. Bag the course and drag it to the motor carriage. But I don't want him to leave. <laughs> Man. That's awesome. I'm really happy we managed to figure that out. I knew something was shady. I almost told him to just bag the corpse, but... Oh, man. I'm really happy I waited. I can't believe I won the 28% like, the check, but failed the 83% one. That's great. <laughs> I think I failed like every red check there possibly is. Man, Kim's gonna be gone. What? Okay, I'm gonna leave this episode off here. Like I said, I should sh just stop recording late. I just, I, every time I do it, I regret it. And I really do this time because I'm just so tired. And I'm trying to talk quietly so I don't wake up my family. This is, episode isn't as long as I would have wanted it to be. But the last few episodes have been really long. So I think it's a good break of pace. We got quite a bit done. Really important stuff. I'm so happy we managed to figure out that he didn't actually die from the hanging. He was shot and it was made to look like a hanging and we figured out before we could get fooled by it. Really cool. I have a feeling that's going to help us a lot later on down the road. So I'm very excited about that. I'm sad that Kim's going to be gone the rest of the day, it seems, but hopefully he'll be back day three and we can hang out again. We met Everett Claire, which is really cool. And I hate him. He's so scummy and just sleazy gross. Oh, and we figured out that Harry's last name is Dubois. Harry Dubois. Uh, allegedly. We don't know if that's for sure his last name. It was just written by the um, something bureau, which technically isn't even an RCM file. He just kind of got it. So uh, that's interesting. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, even though it was a mess and I'm really tired. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye.